The flow characteristics of aftermarket exhaust systems are generally different from the OEM system by enough that you need to retune the fuel injection system to get the air to fuel ratio back to where it needs to be. This is especially true for full exhaust system upgrades where the OEM system is replaced from the headers back to the muffler. There are a variety of options available in the aftermarket for retuning your fuel injection system. To understand any of them, you first need a basic idea of how the fuel injection system works on your bike. The electronic fuel injection system on your Yamaha Triple is centered around an engine control unit, or ECU, which is basically a small computer that receives several inputs from different controls and sensors on the motorcycle, and then outputs instructions to the fuel injection system, in particular, the duration of time over which the fuel injectors should remain open when they open. There are two basic approaches to altering how your ECU manages your fuel injection system. The first is to attach an aftermarket device to the system that alters how it works. This is often referred to as a piggyback system. The device is permanently installed with your bike and is constantly running when your bike is running, and it now becomes part of the system, which must be reliable in order for your bike to continue running. The second option is to reprogram the engine control unit itself so that your bike's fuel injection system looks essentially the same in the sense that there is no piggyback module attached to it and is therefore basically maintaining the reliability of the original system. It's just been retuned internally. SC Project sells a piggyback device called the AFM or air fuel modifier. This alters the way your ECU works by interfering with the air temperature sensor input to the ECU. It's a pretty simple approach to retuning the fuel system. The problem with that, in my opinion, is that the adjustment of that dial is kind of guesswork. It's basically up to you to twist the throttle and feel the response, and from that, guess that your mixture is correct, that you're producing more power and torque, and all is well. A more sophisticated piggyback option is the Power Commander 5, made by DinoJet. The Power Commander 5 works by intercepting the instructions from the ECU to the fuel injection system and replacing those with its own. It can be connected to a computer, and it comes with a nice software package that includes a whole bunch of canned fuel maps. With that software package, you can edit or alter those fuel maps. It also allows you to read out the air-to-fuel ratio that you're getting on the bike. If you're willing to spend a little extra money, you can buy the auto-tuning module that tunes your bike as you ride. I like this option a lot for something like a track bike, but for a street bike where the reliability of it is a concern, I just can't get over the idea that that little piggyback unit might stop working and leave me stranded somewhere. ECU flash tuning is the option I prefer. The simplest and cheapest way to get your ECU flash tuned is to remove it from your bike and ship it off to a tuning house to have them install their own custom developed fuel maps on your ECU. FTECU and V Cycle Nut are both reputable flash tuners who offer flash tuning services for the XSR900 at around $200. It is also possible to flash tune the ECU yourself. You can get an ECU flashing kit, which will include software, some canned fuel maps, and you can connect your computer to your ECU and do the tuning on your own. This might be a great option for the diehard do-it-yourselfer who wants to tinker with their motorcycle, but unless the flash tuning kit includes maps that fit your bike and the aftermarket parts you've put on your bike well, you're going to need something like a dyno and a few other things if you want to do a good job developing your own fuel maps. I decided to take the bike to Attack Performance because they have a good reputation as a dyno tuning shop, and a friend of mine had had his FZ09 tuned there and was very pleased with the results. They take your bike, they put it on a dyno, they get measurements of the air-to-fuel ratio while also measuring the power output on the dyno, and they tune your fuel map to balance the air-to-fuel ratio towards an ideal value in the 13.5 kind of range while optimizing the power output you get at all the different throttle positions. So you get a nice optimized tune for your specific bike with your specific exhaust setup and not some approximate tune some shop flashes to your ECU based on a model that they've done some tuning on in the past. So one dreary day in March, I took the XSR down to attack performance in Huntington Beach, got to witness some of the sights that the 405 has to offer, and Josef at attack performance hooked me up. Now, I'm not the type of person who generally tends to enjoy extremely loud exhausts, so initially I went in to attack, assuming that I was going to set the bike up 
with the baffle inserted and have a relatively quiet but still louder and nice sounding bike. However, once we got there and started testing on the dyno, the impact of the insert was significant and I ended up deciding that day to go without the baffle and had Josef tune the bike without the baffle. So I took the bike home, I took it out to the snake, spent a day riding it, rode it to work a few times and decided it was just a little bit too loud for me. So I installed the baffle again, took the bike back to Josef at Tac Performance and then had it tuned to run with the baffle. So I'm going to share that data with you now. We'll start by looking at the measured performance of the stock fuel map running the SC Project Exhaust with the DB Killer baffle installed. First, looking at the measured air to fuel ratio, we can see that the bike is running rich. The ideal stoichiometric air to fuel mixture ratio is 14.7, but when tuning for power, Typically, tuners will shoot for something in the range of 13 to 13.5. Here we can see that we're dropping down below 12 parts air to 1 part fuel as the engine speed is increased. This results in a fairly disappointing peak measured torque of 57 foot-pounds with a peak power output of 98 horsepower at the rear wheel. Once the baseline performance had been measured, the tuning work began. This started with a basic ECU flash package removing the speed restriction on the engine rev rate, which increased the red line from 10,000 to 11,000 RPM. It also reset the temperature at which the cooling fans kick on to lower the overall operating temperature. The fuel map optimization process itself took a few hours of work. This consisted of adjusting the fuel map at each throttle position and then measuring the performance on the dyno along with the air to fuel ratio, adjusting the maps again, and then repeating the process iteratively until the process was done and an optimized fuel map had been achieved. The optimized fuel map produces an air to fuel ratio of between 13 to 13.5 across the rev band. The measured peak torque output increased from 57 to 59 foot pounds for a gain of plus two and the measured peak power output increased from 98 to 105 horsepower for a gain of plus seven. With the DB Killer baffle removed from the system, the stock fuel map does a little better job running the system, although it still runs rich. After tuning, attack performance was able to bring the mixture back into the ideal 13 to 13.5 range across the rev band. The peak torque output was measured to be 61 foot-pounds before tuning, which is higher than the case with the baffle. After tuning, it was increased to 62 foot-pounds for a gain of 1. The peak power output started at 107 horsepower with the stock fuel map, again, significantly better than when the baffle is installed. And after tuning, that was increased from 107 to 112 horsepower for a gain of plus 5. So, despite what keyboard warriors might tell you on the internet, installing an SC Project aftermarket exhaust on your Yamaha XSR900 or FZ09 results in the bike running rich, not lean, and you will need to retune the fuel system. If you're like me and you don't like an overly loud exhaust, you may decide to run the SC Project with the DB Killer baffle installed, and this will cost you some performance gain. The peak torque we measured with my bike was 59 foot-pounds with the baffle inserted, 62 foot-pounds with it removed. The peak horsepower with the baffle inserted was 105, and it was 112 horsepower with the baffle removed. So the natural question is, how does this compare to the stock setup? Unfortunately, I didn't think to get a dyno measurement performed before doing the swap. So I did the next best thing I could think of, which is to do a little keyboard warrioring myself. I scoured the internet looking for dyno runs on stock Yamaha triples. I was able to find two dyno runs on stock 2016 XSR 900s and five dyno runs on stock FZ 09s ranging from 2015 to 2017 model years. In this survey of seven different dyno runs on stock Yamaha triples, the median value for the peak power output was 105 horsepower. So by that comparison, the SC Project exhaust with the baffle inserted offers basically no improvement over the stock system, but with the baffle removed, a pretty significant gain over the stock system of about seven horsepower. Factor in the weight reduction, the improvement in appearance and sound, and you have yourself quite a nice upgrade. It does come at some cost as the exhaust system was over $1,100 and the tuning at attack was over $600. But there you go, 